the most common type of embolism is pulmonary thromboembolism. Over 90% of them are derived from the deep veins of the legs. Pulmonary thromboemboli are often recurrent. Here you can see a deep vein thrombosis in the lower leg. In minor pulmonary thromboembolism, it is the peripheral pulmonary arteries that are blocked. This accounts for approximately 85% of cases of pulmonary thromboembolism. The emboli may be subclinical or they may cause pleuritic chest pain and breathlessness. If the emboli are recurrent, there may be cumulative damage to the lungs resulting in pulmonary hypertension. Approximately 10% of cases of pulmonary thromboembolism are caused by blockage of the middle-sized pulmonary arteries by thromboemboli. These may cause an infarct. Symptoms include breathlessness, pleuritic chest pain and hemoptysis. This is a middle-sized pulmonary artery occluded by a thrombus. The reddish area of lung towards the left of the picture is an area of pulmonary infarction. In massive pulmonary thromboembolism, over 60% of the pulmonary vasculature is blocked. This causes rapid death but only accounts for approximately 5% of cases of pulmonary thromboembolism. This is an example of massive pulmonary thromboembolism. The thrombus occludes the proximal pulmonary artery in this lung. In systemic thromboembolism, the thromboemboli arise in the arterial system. They may develop on an ulcerated atheromatous plaque or in an aneurysm. The mural thrombus following a myocardial infarct may give rise to a thromboembolus. Atrial thrombine patients with mitral valve disease or atrial fibrillation may embolize. Vegetations from endocarditis may embolize, resulting in mycotic aneurysms. Very, very rarely the systemic thromboembolism may be paradoxical. This vessel shows thrombosis of a complicated atheromatous plaque. In paradoxical thromboembolism, the emboli gain access from the venous circulation into the systemic arterial circulation through a patent atrial or ventricular septal defect where there is a right-to-left shunt.